Welcome to Electro Online. Now that we've seen the previous videos, let's try our hand on this one right here, where we have two blocks on top of one another, connected to one another through a pulley, and we need to find the acceleration of the system. Of course, the bottom block will accelerate in this direction, and the top block will accelerate in that direction. Okay, let's try to determine all the friction forces between the various surfaces, but then of course before we can do that, we have to find all the forces acting on the blocks. For M1, we have a force acting this way, this would be M1G, and then we have the perpendicular component, which is M1G times a cosine of theta. Notice the angle here is 60 degrees, it may not look like it, but just to save space I made it smaller, but let's count it to be 60 degrees. And then we have this parallel component, and that would be m1g times the sine of theta. We did the same for the top block. We have, uh, hmm, it's going to get crowded here, m2g, which gives us the vertical component, m2g times the cosine of theta, and then we have the m2g times the sine of theta. All right. Now we have two normal forces. We have the normal force between the wedge here, the surface of the wedge, and the block M1. So we have the normal force, let's call this N1, and we have a second normal force between the two blocks, let's call it N2. And yes, that is getting crowded, so let me write down what these are. So we have N1 is equal to the normal force, which is going to be the sum of these two forces right here. It's going to be M2G cosine of theta, plus m1g times the cosine of theta. So it'll be the normal force as a result of both of these vertical components pushing against the surface. n2 is only going to be caused by the vertical component of, of m2, so n2 is going to be equal to m2g times the cosine of theta. So now we need to find the friction forces. First of all, the friction force between this block and the surface and the direction will be, let's see here, if we assume that without any friction this block will slide in this direction, that means the friction force must be pushing in the opposite direction. Let's call that force friction 1, and we can write that down here. Force friction 1 is equal to normal force 1 times mu sub 1, and the normal force 1 is m2g cosine of theta plus m1g cosine of theta, all divided by mu 1. All right, how about the second force, the friction force? On M1 is the force between the two blocks. And the direction of that force, again, will be opposite to the motion of M1 if the, for the friction force wasn't there. means there's a second friction force in this direction called force friction 2. And force friction 2 is going to be N2 times mu2, which is equal to M2g times cosine of theta, multiply times mu sub 2. All right, now there's one more friction force. The friction force on M2 caused by the two surfaces sliding over one another, but in that case, the friction force will be in the opposite direction. Notice M2 will accelerate up the block, therefore, we're gonna have an opposing friction force this way, force friction three, and force friction three will have the same magnitude but opposite in the direction to force friction 1, which is m2 times mu2, which is m2g cosine of theta multiplied times mu2. So now we've established all the friction forces, and we have the two forces that are acting on the blocks due to the weight, the m1g sine theta component and the m2g sine theta component. So now to find the acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the net force on the system divided by the total mass. And the net force is going to be all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. All divided by the sum of the two masses, M1 plus M2. Acceleration is equal to the force aiding and notice here that there's only one single force that's aiding acceleration. It's M1g sine theta. 
M1G sine theta, which is the force that's pulling M1 down the incline. M2G sine theta is pulling in the opposite direction of the acceleration, so it's not eating, it's opposing. So it would be M2G sine theta. There we go. And uh, let's see here. Then we have the friction forces, minus force friction one, minus force friction two, and minus force friction three. All three friction forces are opposing the acceleration. Notice this and this is in the opposite direction of the acceleration of M1, and this is in the opposite direction of the acceleration of M2. So now to make it easier, what we're going to do is calculate the three friction forces separately here. So we have force friction one is equal to, that would be this quantity right here, M2, which is two kilograms, times G, 9.8, times the cosine of 60 degrees, plus M1, which is five kilograms, times 9.8, times the cosine of 60 degrees, and the whole thing multiplied times mu1, and mu1 is 0.1. Let's see what that's equal to. So we have seven times 9.8, times 0.5, and times 0.1 equals 3.43, and of course that's in newtons, 3.43 newtons. How about force friction two? Well, that's equal to this times mu sub two, and let's see here, m sub two, that's two kilograms, times 9.8, times the cosine of 60 degrees, and times mu sub two, which is 0.2. Now here we get 2 times the cosine of 60, that would be uh, 1 times 9.8 times 0.2, which is 1.96 newtons. And for force friction 3, that would be exactly the same as force friction 2, 1.96 newtons. So now that we have those individually calculated, now we can go ahead and put it all together. The acceleration equals m1g sine theta, m1, that's 5, times 9.8 times the sine of 60 degrees minus m2g sine theta, m2 is 2 kilograms, times 9.8 times the sine of 60 degrees minus 3.43 minus 1.96 and minus 1.96. So let's calculate it, see what these are equal to. That's 49 times the sine of 60 is 42.44 minus, that would be 19.6 times the sine of 60 equals, that would be minus 16.97 minus 3.43 minus 1.96 and minus 1.96. And finally, oh, and I'm forgetting one thing. I have to divide all of these by the total mass. That would be M1 plus M2. Divide the whole thing by the total mass. That would be seven kilograms. Divide the whole thing by seven. And so the acceleration is equal to, we get 42.44 minus 16.97 minus 3.43 minus 1.96 twice and divide the whole thing by seven, and we get 2.59 meters per second square. Wow, that was quite a problem. The most difficult part probably is trying to find the direction of the friction forces. And again, the best way to do that is to realize that if there was no friction at all, which way would M1 go? M1 would accelerate down the incline like this, so the friction forces on M1 will be in the opposite direction. For M2, M2 will accelerate up the incline, therefore the friction force between M1 and M2 on M2 will be in this direction. And that's the best way to think about it. And that's how we get the right answer.